Hey everybody, welcome back to Heartland Productions. Today we're gonna to be doing step two of how to make a biga dough for cooking Neapolitan pizza. Let's go ahead and get the biga starter out of the refrigerator now. So if you're just joining me for the first time, make sure you go back and watch step one so you understand what this is. This is the Biga starter. It's been cold fermenting in the refrigerator for 48 hours. So we're gonna go ahead and set the Biga starter kind of over out of the way for right now. What's the equipment we're gonna need for this step? We're still gonna need one of the bags of flour. This is one full kilo, one bag of, of double zero flour. We have the leftover. This is about 100 grams left over from step one. This again is what we're gonna to use to set on our work surface to flour down so if, or if the dough's too sticky, we can add a little bit more. Also, if you're gonna be buying flour, go ahead and order some semolina. This is gonna help you out for when you're stretching your dough and you need to launch the pizzas into your pizza oven too. So if you're ordering it today, go ahead and order a couple bags of these too. I'll put all the links in the description. You are also going to need a mixer. I happen to have the, the standard artisan KitchenAid mixer. This recipe in total is gonna to make about eight pizzas. So if you need more than that, you're gonna to have to make two separate batches because that's about the maximum capacity for this size of mixer. You're also gonna need a pitcher that's gonna be able to hold at least three and a half cups of water, preferably four just to give you a little bit more room. You're gonna need your, your kitchen scale again. And then some other things, I like to have a large mixing bowl. This is gonna help us when we're proofing the dough. You're gonna need 30 grams of sea salt. I like to use a heavy duty um, silicone spatula to help get the dough out of the mixing bowl. You're also gonna need two different bench scrapers. I like to use a metal bench scraper to help cut the dough when I'm forming the dough balls. And then you're gonna want a flexible bench scraper too. This helps when you're actually kind of mixing up the, the the dough right when you pull it out of the mixer. So this helps too. You may want to have some measuring spoons too to help measure the salt if you need to. I think that's it. Oh, other two. When you're done too, you're going to need something to put the dough in when you put the dough balls. So what I like to use is a, this is an actual dough box. This is a dough mates one. I'll put a link of this too in the bottom of the description, but this will hold eight dough balls in here. This size is great also because it actually fits right in the refrigerator. If you don't have a dough box, you can just use the same type of container that we did the biggest starter in, is that you can put two dough balls in here. So if you're gonna only be making a few pizzas at a time, you don't really need a giant dough box. You can just buy a few of these. They fit in the refrigerator if you need them to. You can use them for other things also. The larger dough box is awfully nice because it gives you a lot more room and it's non-stick. So it's much easier to get the dough balls out. And then this one actually comes with this, this scraper too. I would consider that if you're gonna be making a lot of pizza. One last thing before we get started, I forgot to mention too, if you're gonna be using a mixer, make sure you have a dough hook attachment. This will make it much easier to mix the dough in. So to get things started, it's easier to go ahead and get all of your ingredients measured and already separated out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the mixing bowl to put the water in directly. This just saves, it's one last thing you have to wash. So we're gonna put this on grams, set it here. Let's zero it out. We're gonna need about 800 grams of water. That comes out to about three and a half cups. But again, I would definitely use the scale because it gets it's more precise and gives you exactly that 800 grams of water. Perfect. All right, we just measured out the 800 grams of water. We're gonna go ahead and put the mixing bowl back on the KitchenAid. Make sure it's all locked in place. Leave that up. Next thing we're gonna do, wanna do is measure out the salt. I'm gonna set an empty bowl on the scale, zero that out. Then I'm gonna add 30 grams of sea salt. So gently pour some sea salt in. Don't use regular table salt. Don't use kosher salt. You wanna make sure you use sea salt. Okay, we have the 30 grams of sea salt all measured out. We're gonna go ahead and set that aside for right now. We're actually done with the scale. We're actually pretty much done with the scale for right now. We'll need this a little bit later when we're measuring out the dough balls. So don't put it away yet, just set it aside. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add the Biga starter to the mixer. Go ahead and open this up. 
This was in the refrigerator for 48 hours. It's already fermented. It already has all the yeast in it, everything. So we're not gonna need any additional yeast at all today. This is all gonna be all clumped together. What you wanna do is you wanna break this up a little bit by hand and you wanna start adding it to the bowl. So just kind of break it up a little bit first as much as you can, add a little bit in, start adding it directly to the water that's already in the mixing bowl. Make sure you get all the little bits and pieces that are still left in there. You don't want anything to go to waste. Now we're gonna mix it up by hand. You wanna kinda of just mix it all around until it softens up a little bit. Make sure there aren't any big clumps. Once the water looks milky like this, you're pretty much done. Then you're gonna go ahead and put the mixer down, lock it in place, and you're gonna then turn this on medium. So the KitchenAid, you have basically two through 10. I'm gonna put it on four right now, just to kind of start incorporating the Biga. Okay, I've had the Biga mixing up for just about a minute or so. Now it's time to add the flour. I'm gonna turn it off just for a second so you can hear. If you watch step one, you're gonna know, the great thing about this recipe is that to add the extra flour for step two is that you don't have to measure anything. It's exactly one kilo or a thousand grams, or it's 2.2 pounds of the type 00 flour. So I'm gonna turn this back on and we're gonna dump about half of this into the mix with the Biga. And then we're gonna let it mix up around a little bit. And then we're gonna add the second half in a few minutes. So we'll turn this back on to four. And you're gonna, gonna slowly pour this in so you don't make a big mess basically. Add a little bit at a time. I like to just go from one side to the other so it doesn't all clump together. We're gonna to add about half a flour right now. Like I mentioned, I usually rotate around. It doesn't make a difference how much you put in. I like to do a little bit at a time until I hit about that halfway point. Okay, we've put about half the flour in right now. You, you can see it's starting to thicken up a little bit. Now that we have half the flour in, I like to also add the sea salt. So the 30 grams of sea salt, we're just gonna mix that in. I like to put about half of it on each side just to kind of help mix it up a little bit. Let that mix up for just a couple seconds. Now we're gonna add the rest of the flour. Okay, all of the flour's been added to. This is when I like to use the silicon spatula Kind of go around the edges gently. Go around the edges. Make sure all the flour's mixed up properly. Okay, the mixer's been on for about five minutes. You can tell the dough's starting to incorporate nicely now. It has the texture of soft serve ice cream right now. It's looking good. You wanna make sure there's no flour around the edges. Again, if there is, use your spatula and kind of scrape it down in. I'm gonna let it run on this speed. I actually turned it down to to two, the lowest speed, to go ahead and finish mixing. The mixer's been running for about 20 minutes. It's looking great. This is the texture you're looking for. It's kind of like an ice cream texture. This is a very high hydration dough. Again, it's about 70% hydration. It's gonna be very sticky. Getting out of the bowl can sometimes be tricky. Let's go ahead and get it out. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. We're gonna use our spatula again, kind of scrape off any of the dough, get the dough hook as clean as possible. Let's go ahead and get, take the bowl out. We are done with the mixer, put it over there. This is why we have the leftover flour. We're gonna use the remaining flour from our step one. Liberally sprinkle it out on a nice clean work surface. Basically just scrape it out. This dough is gonna be extremely sticky. As I mentioned, it's 70% hydration, so the vast majority of this is water. Hey, okay, we have the dough all out. It's extremely sticky. What I like to do is sprinkle a little more flour on top. You wanna to add as little of flour in this step as possible. You are gonna to have to add a little bit just because it's not gonna be workable. It's gonna be so sticky without it. So you add just enough on top so you can kind of touch it. Now this is where you wanna have your flexible bench scraper. It's gonna help you get flour underneath. So you're gonna kind of use it like this, scrape it. Take some of that flour that's on your table, your work surface, and you kind of scrape it up underneath. Don't be afraid to add flour if it's too sticky, but add little by little. Once you get it to that fine spot, you don't really want to have to add too much more. Okay, just kind of mix it all around. It's looking good. All right, we've mixed it up just for a minute or so here. We want to get it to the point where you'll be able to pick this up so we can start strengthening the dough to help build the glutens up. I always add a little flour just so I can start picking it up without it sticking too much to my hands. There we go, it's getting better. It's still a little bit sticky. This is where it makes a difference too. If you're in a place where it's very hot and humid or in the summertime here in Texas, 
that sometimes I actually add a little bit less water when I'm making the dough because it gets so warm that, that it makes it almost impossible to work with the dough. Maybe do like a 65% hydration, which basically just experiment by adding a little bit less water or a little bit more flour. This part seems tedious, but it's actually the most fun. You want it to be able, you want to be able to pick it up without it sticking too much to your hands. All right, the dough's just getting perfectly workable right now. We, like I said, we had to add a little bit more flour just to kind of, so it's not so sticky. So we want to kind of form it into a ball. You kind of roll it back and forth. And you pinch it on the sides like this, pick it up, throw it down. Again, when you do that, it's going to get sticky again. Use your leftover flour on the bench, kind of get underneath it. If it's too sticky at this point, you need to make, you can add a little bit more flour too. There we go. You're going to do this again. For some reason, I forgot to record me placing the bowl on top of the dough. So this is the step where you need to take that mixing bowl from the beginning, cover up the dough ball, and you're going to let it rest for 30 minutes. Another important thing that I forgot to mention is that once you start this process, it's about a five hour process in total. It takes about two hours and that includes mixing up the dough, letting it rest, etc. So it's about two hours just to get the dough mixed up, make the dough balls, everything, get everything ready. Then once you have the dough balls in the dough box, it takes another two to three hours for those to rise and be ready to start cooking. So it takes about five hours in total. So if you're going to have pizza night at 5 p.m., you need to start this around 12 noon. Okay, the dough's been resting for about 30 minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the, the mixing pan, mixing bowl off, use the bench scraper again, kind of helps release it. Perfect. You just kind of go around the edges, release it, set that aside. We're gonna need that here in a few minutes. The dough's absorbed some of the flour, so it's pretty sticky again. I use this to kind of mix it up a little bit. What we're gonna do now is strengthen the dough one more time. So do this again about 10 more times. If you need to, you can add a little bit more flour now. I would be hesitant. I'll put a little bit more on the counter just in case. You don't really wanna to add too much at this point in time unless you absolutely have to because it doesn't have time to absorb. We'll do it slow again. So you grab, pinch it on the sides. Pick it up like this, kind of hold it up in the air, let it drop a little bit. Do that again. You can really feel the dough now. It's starting to fill with air when you hit it. it kind of has almost like a fluffy, airy sound to it. Once you do this a few times, you'll start feeling, it just feels right. I lost count. I usually do it about 10 times. Now we're going to form a nice dough ball again. Try to form it up as nice as possible. Kind of roll it back on itself. Try to get nice. There we go. That's looking great. It's looking good. Now we're going to cover it back up with the same bowl again. Cover it for 10 more minutes. Okay, we're almost done making this. So for this step, we're gonna go ahead and uncover this. It's been resting for 10 minutes. We're done with this bowl. You're gonna need your scale out again so we get the exact same size for the dough balls. You're gonna need your metal bench scraper. This is what I use to help cut the dough. And you really don't need this one. This one I keep around just in case I need to scrape the, the dough ball up. I have the flour just in case it starts sticking. It's good to have this, keep a little bit of it handy still. And you need to have your dough box ready because once we make the dough balls, we're gonna put them in here so they can proof and be ready to cook. As I mentioned, this basically makes eight dough balls. So what I do to make it a little bit easier, I kind of just cut it in quarters first. So I cut it in half. Doesn't have to be exact, just kind of a ballpark. And then I cut each one of those in half also. This just makes it a little bit more manageable. Then once again, I cut those in half again also too. So that way I have a rough estimate of what they should be. This part does not have to be exact, so don't worry. You're just trying to get eight chunks of dough relatively the same size. So now we're gonna start rolling these into balls. You might need a little bit of extra flour on the counter too, because once you cut the dough, the sides are a little bit sticky, so I kind of flour my hands up. So we'll throw this on here. 
Again, you want to have it close to 280 as possible. Anything over 280 is going to be too big for most small ovens. And if you're using a 12 inch peel, it's going to hang off the side and you're going to have potential disaster. So a uh, typical Neapolitan needs to be between 200 and 280. So this is 260. So I'm going to add a little bit more. 281. Take a little bit off. Perfect. 280. That one's done. Let's throw this one on. 283. Perfect. 280. We've got another one. Okay, I've measured all these out. Now I'm gonna make these into dough balls. I had a little bit extra. This one's about 200 grams left over. You can keep this and make a little mini pizza out of it. But for consistency, it's always better to have exactly the same amount for each one. That way they cook the same. You should have relatively the same size. It just makes for a better end product. So what I do is kind of roll this around with my hand a little bit, kind of like this slowly. What I like to do is put it in my hands Form it like this. Okay, step two is done. We have all the dough balls in the dough box. We're gonna cover this up. And we're gonna set it out room temperature. It's gonna take anywhere between one and three hours. This part, basically you need them to double in size. Right now we're in the winter time, it's early February, so it's kind of cold outside. So this will probably take more around the two to three hour time before it's ready. In summertime here when it's hot and humid, I've seen it them proof and double in size in as little as one hour. Minimum, you're looking at about one hour, maximum about three hours. Anything more than three hours, they're gonna start overproofing and they're gonna get too soft and very difficult to work with. You wanna make sure that in about two hours, two to three hours, that the pizza oven's ready, all your sides are ready to go and you're ready to make pizza. Don't forget, if you haven't already right now, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification button. Okay, it's been three hours since I put the dough in the dough box. They should be nice and risen. You can see right now, they're looking great. So here's the trick to get these out. This is why I showed you about the semolina flour earlier. You want to get, this is the best one, caputo, the semolina flour. It's the perfect texture. I'll show you how I use it too. First off, I fill a bowl up to have it ready, have a bowl. Then you want to sprinkle some around the dough you're going to take out. A little bit like that. And then that way you can get the your dough spatula kind of just gently kind of push some underneath because the last thing you want to do is you don't want to tear or pop or do anything to release the air out of the dough you're going to gently do that pick it up like this and you're going to put the top side down in the bowl we'll cover this back up for right now slide that over so you're going to do it like that put it in the bowl you're gonna dump a little bit of the semolina on the tail and then put the bottom down like that. That way you have a nice little work area. The dough is very light, very fluffy. There we go, now it's we kind of put, we don't need all this. What you don't wanna do is you don't want the air to escape. You do need to push down in the middle, so gently push down in the middle with both hands. Kind of push in the middle and then start pushing and you're going to form the crust or they call the cornichone which is the outer crust right there you want that part to be basically where all the air is going so you're sliding it around and the good thing about making the biga dough is that you really don't have to stretch it the dough is so light and airy that it pretty much stretches out itself it's not like if you've ever made pizza and have to use a rolling pin and you're tugging this one not so much Look at that, it's pretty much shaped already. What I like to do is pick it up. I kind of just do this a little bit. This gets it, you want it a little bit, just around 12 inches of diameter, which is pretty much it. Let's get some of the flour out of the way. You want to leave a little tiny bit on the bottom so you can pick it up so the peel doesn't, the pizza doesn't stick, especially right now, this stainless steel. One of the downsides of using a stainless steel table is, is that it, it gets cold. Wood stays nice and warm. So we want a little bit down so it doesn't stick. There we go. This one is pretty much ready. We kind of form it a little bit more. Okay, this one's ready for sauce. Go ahead and put some fresh mozzarella on it, some fresh basil, and some olive oil. Now we're gonna get the pizza on the peel. I like to get as much under the pizza as possible at the beginning. The good thing about the semolina, you saw I didn't have to use my hand, I didn't have to pull it. You still want to shape it a little bit. So once you get it on the peel, make sure it's kind of 
if you need to stretch it out a little bit more, you do. Again, this is actually about the perfect shape. Look at that. That looks great. Let's get this in the oven. All right, it's in the oven. Let's, we'll leave it there for about 30 seconds and let's check it. It's been about 30 seconds or so and it's winter time. So I want to warm the turning peel up, get it nice and warm. That just helps it so it slides under. You don't want to tear the bottom of the crust, especially in the first 30, 40 seconds or so until the bottom gets cooked better. I'm going to give it a turn. Give it another 30 seconds or so. I have my oven, it's about 850 degrees right now. Okay, as you can see, the pizza turned out absolutely amazing. Perfect pizza. It's going to be light, crunchy, soft in the middle, delicious. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget, again, take advantage, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button. It really does help allow me to produce more of these videos. So thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good night.